Jean-Claude Van Damme, a name synonymous with the martial arts and action film genre, has had a roller coaster ride for a career. Van Damme's career has spanned over three decades. During that time, he has become one of Hollywood's most recognizable and iconic figures through his electrifying performances and acrobatic fight scenes. However, with success, there is always a chance failure might come along too. And that's what happened with Jean-Claude Van Damme. He went through many difficulties in his personal life, as his life has been marked by struggles with addiction, failed relationships, and financial challenges. In this video, let's take a closer look at the life story of Jean-Claude Van Damme, exploring both his meteoric rise to stardom and his subsequent fall from grace. We will go on a journey through his life and will gain a deeper understanding of the man behind the action hero persona in the 80s and the 90s and the complex and difficult path that he took, which led him to where he is today. We know him by Jean-Claude Van Damme, but his actual name was Jean-Claude Camille Francois Van Varenberg. He was born on October 18, 1960, in Brussels, Belgium, in a working-class family. His father, Eugene, was an accountant, and his mother, Eliana, was a housewife. From an early age, Van Damme showed a keen interest in martial arts and began studying Shotokan karate when he was 10 and became a master in it by the age of 18 when he received his black belt. While doing karate training, he ventured into other fighting styles too, which led him to learn kickboxing, taekwondo, and Muay Thai honing his skills and developing his signature style of high-flying kicks and acrobatic maneuvers. But during his kickboxing and karate ventures, he was struggling at school. Van Damme was frequently getting into trouble for his rebellious behavior and ended up dropping out of high school when he was 16 and started working odd jobs to support himself. It was during this time that he started to dream of a career in show business and started taking acting classes at night while working as a bouncer at a bar. Van Damme finally made his film debut in a Belgian martial arts film, Monaco Forever, in 1982. When a local filmmaker saw his fighting potential and his charisma during a fight and offered to cast him in a small role in the movie. Van Damme followed this with a series of small roles in Belgian films like The Professional and Missing in Action. Despite having no previous acting experience, Van Damme's natural screen presence and physicality made him a standout on set, and this encouraged him to move to the U.S. so his talent could be utilized and presented to the people with full potential. When he came to U.S., he was able to find work easily as a stuntman because of his martial arts background and his muscle-built body, so settling in U.S. was a little easier for him than other actors. Van Damme nearly got his big breakthrough in Predator, where he was cast for playing Predator behind the mask. But his behavior on the set and his perception of what Predator would be like led him to get fired from the movie. But a year before Predator, he was able to get a leading role in the movie No Retreat, No Surrender, where he was able to showcase to the producers his martial arts skills and willingness to perform his own stunts, which created a route for him to be considered for more and more movies. The prime of Jean-Claude Van Damme's career spanned from the late 1980s to the mid-1990s, during which he cemented his status as one of the most iconic action stars of his time. His popularity grew with each film, and he became a household name around the world. Following the success of No Retreat, No Surrender, Van Damme began to get attention from Hollywood producers. In 1988, he starred in Bloodsport, which was loosely based on the real-life story of martial artist Frank Dux. The movie was a massive hit and cemented Van Damme's status as a rising star in the action movie genre. After Bloodsport, Van Damme gave hit after hit. He did Kickboxer, 1989, Cyborg, 1989, and Death Warrant, 1990, all of which were commercial and critical hits. After these movies, Van Damme became a global star overnight and was a lot popular in Europe, especially for putting Belgium on the world map with his acting. During his prime, Van Damme starred in some of his most memorable roles, including Universal Soldier, Sudden Death, and Street Fighter. His films were known for their fast-paced action, impressive fight choreography, and cheesy one-liners, which became a hallmark of his style. 
There were many action heroes in the 80s and 90s, but no one was like him. His physicality and martial arts skills were unmatched, and unlike other action heroes, he could actually perform all those complex fight scenes and make them seem more relatable to people on screen. Still, even with his martial arts skills and chiseled physique, Van Damme wasn't all about it. If it weren't for his acting skills, people wouldn't have treated him like an actual movie hero. He was more than just a robot doing stunts on a movie set. He showed his acting skills to us in the movies like Nowhere to Run, where he played a convict trying to start a new life, and Hard Target, where he portrayed a homeless veteran caught up in a dangerous game. Even though Jean-Claude Van Damme's career reached great heights during his prime, he also experienced significant struggles and setbacks later on in his career. These challenges ultimately led to a decline in his career and public image in the late 1990s and early 2000s, and he hasn't gotten back to his original rise ever since. One of the significant struggles Van Damme had to go through was his drug addiction. In his autobiography, The Muscles from Brussels, he writes about his use of cocaine and other drugs during his rise to fame in the 1980s and 1990s, and during that time, it not only took a toll on his professional life, but also on his personal life too. His addiction simply led to him having erratic behavior on set, which made his co-workers hate working with him. Cast members of Street Fighter have reportedly talked about his lack of interest in doing the scenes and being on time on set, and even when he was on the set, he wasn't in the condition to do any acting because of drug abuse. Along with that, he was getting divorced again and again and couldn't really find stability in life and any motivation to work after. The only thing that kept him working every day was his addiction. In addition to his addiction issues, Van Damme also struggled with personal demons, including depression and anxiety. He often felt isolated and overwhelmed by the pressures of fame and success, which led to his erratic behavior and public outbursts. Due to this, he was often portrayed as a troubled and unpredictable figure in the media, which led to a decline in his reputation, and hence he started losing more and more roles. Years later, in 2011, he finally told the world about being bipolar and why his condition made it too difficult for him to do an acting job with perfection, have good relationships with his co-stars, and have a good personal life. As the mid-90s came along, Van Damme became a less in-demand actor, and he started to come in more low-budgeted movies. Basically, Van Damme's downfall was his choice of roles. He often played the same type of character, the tough, stoic hero with a troubled past, which led to a lack of variety in his filmography. As audiences grew tired of seeing the same type of film from him, he struggled to find new projects that could appeal to them. Slowly as time passed, Van Damme's competition in the action genre grew over time. New stars like Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Jason Statham were emerging, each with their own unique styles and approaches to action cinema, which made it unapproachable for him to even think about being able to captivate audiences like new stars. In the end, he struggled to adapt to these changes in the industry. He continued to rely on his trademark style, which ultimately led to diminishing returns at the box office and getting bashed by critiques. In recent years, Van Damme has experienced somewhat of a resurgence in his career. Throughout the 2000s and early 2010s, he carried on his work. Even though most of his movies were straight to DVDs and people had forgotten who he was, he kept on going and going and didn't leave the industry for even a second. That's why he still isn't counted among forgettable actors and is still in the limelight. Although, after his downfall, he made a lot of movies and shows, the project that brought him back into the limelight was the Amazon Prime series Jean-Claude Van Johnson, which premiered in 2016. The show was a comedic take on Van Damme's action hero persona, following a fictionalized version of the actor as he returns to his former life as a secret agent. The series was well-received by audiences and critics alike, with many praising Van Damme's self-aware performance and willingness to poke fun at himself. In addition to his work on Jean-Claude Van Johnson, he has also appeared in a number of recent films, including the 2018 action thriller Black Water and the 2019 crime drama We Die Young. 
While these films may not have achieved the same level of commercial success as his earlier work, they have helped to keep the actor in the public eye and cemented his status as an enduring icon of the action genre. Van Damme has also continued to collaborate with other filmmakers and actors in recent years, including a cameo appearance in the 2019 film Triple Frontier and a voice role in the 2020 animated movie Minions – The Rise of Gru. He has also worked with directors like John Woo and Ridley Scott, both of whom have praised his talent and dedication to his craft. Part of the reason for his resurgence may be his willingness to embrace new technologies and platforms. Recently, he has appeared in a number of online advertisements and viral videos, showcasing his sense of humor and willingness to connect with fans on social media. At the same time, he has also been open about his personal struggles and past mistakes, including his battles with drug addiction and his often turbulent personal relationships. He has spoken candidly about his regrets and has worked to make amends with those he may have hurt in the past, earning the respect and admiration of many fans and colleagues. Overall, the resurgence of Jean-Claude Van Damme is proof of his enduring talent and charisma as an actor, as well as his willingness to adapt and evolve with the times. Yes, his career has had its ups and downs over the years, but he remains a beloved figure in the action genre and a true icon of martial arts cinema. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please subscribe and turn on the notifications to stay updated on some awesome series and movies. Until next time.